Oh, welcome ah. to Thunder Nerds. I'm Brian Hinton. And I'm Frederick Philip Von Weiss. And thank you for consuming the Thunder Nerds, a conversation with the people behind the technology that love what they do and, and do, do tech good. good. <laughs> we got like a haunted theme going on. Yeah, you, you started the haunted. I did not. Did I do that? Yeah. Oh man, I didn't start drinking so early. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> okay. Hey, speaking of uh, doing tech good, Pantheon.io is allowing us to do just that. They are sponsoring this whole season of the Thunder Nerds. Thank you, Pantheon. Pantheon supplies a uh, platform for WordPress, Drupal 7, Drupal 8. They give you a dev, test, and live environment. Play with all your code before you deploy it to your live site. It's easy to use with Git. You can even push stuff up re via uh, SFTP. It's uh, it's a really cool software. Again, Pantheon.io. They got a petting zoo on Thursday, so go there and get your sheep on. Pantheon. Hey, Brian, we got some contests coming up, right? Uh, con not just contests, but we have some conferences coming up that we're going to be at. We're going to be at... Conferences? Yeah, two of them. Uh, ViewConf at the Straz yeah. Art Center in Tampa Bay. Yeah, um, yeah it's going to be... Uh, it starts the 25th. That's a workshop day, but we'll be there on the 26th and 27th. Um, and we're actually... We have a discount code. Thunderview fifty will give you a fifty dollar discount. That's uh, that's fifty big dollars, and uh, we're also giving away one full three day workshop conference pass. Uh, what's the rules, Frederick? Oh, all you got to do, Brian, is go to the Twitter and tweet out "I want at ViewConf US tickets at Thunder Nerds," and we'll put a link to that in the show notes. You can get yeah, well, your free, yeah, free ticket. We'll get we'll pick a random winner on the show live on uh, Thursday, March 7th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. And, and uh, we're also going to be at the Front End Design Conference again this year. Um, and that's in St. Petersburg, Florida. That's April 25th and 26th at the wonderful Palladium Theater. I love that little theater. Um, and again, we're giving away uh, two Front End Conf passes to two lucky winners. And again, Frederick, how, how do people win Front End Design Conference tickets? Well, Brian, they could either use a Ouija board or they could tweet, I want at Conf Tick at Thunder Nerds. And we'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. So good luck to two random winners getting two random tickets. Uh, so many lucky listeners. So many lucky yeah. listeners. Yeah, so uh, tune into those shows. I hope you guys win. And let's go ahead without any further ado and introduce our guest. We have senior web developer at Alicion. I, I can never say that correctly. Alicion? Alicion? Atlassian. Alassian. Thank you. I know it, <laughs> but I can't pronounce it. Don't worry, Alassian. Did I say it right that time? Diana yes. Smith. Welcome to the show, Diana. <laughs> Jeez. Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> yeah, Alassian is good. They'll, they'll appreciate any shout out. <laughs> just kidding and this is Dewey and uh, this here is Niles so, hi Dewey hi the Niles important, the whole reason that I'm on this show obviously it's not yeah. because woof, woof, of woof. me or anything I love the, I love the, I love the fuzziness of uh, Gooey it's Gooey right uh, oh Dewey is this Dewey one. okay I heard yeah. it wrong Dewey yeah I love the fuzziness <laughs> yeah. Of, yeah. yeah we inherited the name Dewey he just he came with the name and it, it kind of fit him but yeah <laughs> how <laughs> like old are you pups I think they're about five. Um, we've had them about four or five years, and I feel like anytime you adopt a dog that you don't really know the history of, they'll tell you, "Oh yeah, it's a year old." But who knows? I we assume that's that they're still young, so four or five. <laughs> yeah, they look pretty young. Yeah, except this one has—he's uh, like desperately in need of a neck lift, but. Uh, I mean, it suits him. It's Aww. cute. But, yeah. I don't know if we said it out loud, but for our audio listeners, there are two Chihuahuas. Yes. Chihuahua terrier of some kind. And uh, Niles is a dear Chihuahua. And so. you get, you, if you watch the video uh, later, uh, if you're listening, you can actually see them. They're adorable and cute. Yeah. <laughs> and they're, uh, you, oh, they're, they're kissing each other right now. Oh, <laughs> way too cute. Yeah. You, you got you got to go to the check out the video of, of this if you're listening to the audio. Super cute. Three cute. Hey, Diana, where are you actually joining us from today? I, I know that you are from San Francisco, right? I do. Yeah. 
And I live in the South Bay. So I, I settled in Cupertino a few years ago and um, I've been working the South or um, working in SF for seven months now. I uh, I thought at first I was going to try to move closer to SF, but I, I really like it here. It's definitely a kind of a, a long drive in the mornings, but um, it's beautiful and uh, the city is, is close enough that I don't mind. What, what's your commute time? Uh, yesterday I was in the car for two hours, <laughs> just one way. Wow. Yeah, wow. but that's that's not normal. It's just it's been terrible weather here, and um, I don't know the time of year is not great. Usually, I can get by like not more than an hour and a half in the mornings. So oh. it's still not great, but also yeah. Atlassian is super flexible, and I work from home like two days a week, so um, it's really not that bad overall. You can oh, listen, that's to, great, yeah. listen to podcasts on the way. That's what I do. Uh, yeah, I do. precisely. Like, yeah, <laughs> I can listen to myself <laughs> on the way over. <laughs> Yeah, it's not a bad commute at all, especially where you work. And like you said, you get to get to work remotely for two days. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Alaskan is like super flexible about that. They're like very family friendly. And um, I mean, in my case, you know, family being dogs, but uh, that is important to me. So uh, do, yeah, do they let you bring the dogs in there? They actually are a dog friendly company. I have yeah. not tried it with these two because I don't know if they're necessarily work safe um especially niles he's like uh he has good uh, got a colorful past i'm not really sure he he can be a little bit temperamental around uh, other dogs <laughs> obviously not this one but um yeah, yeah. I, i've not attempted it yet but they oh. are a dog friendly office i could just say oh, uh, i could just watch the dogs loving each other for a while <laughs> 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 that's, it can be distracting if I'm trying to work at home and mm -hmm. this is going on in my lap and uh, it's comforting, but it's also I'm supposed to pretend I'm a professional, productive person. doesn't always work. Well, well, speaking that, of that. Oh. <laughs> I was just going to say there's there's no real delineation between that and, and having animals. I think that could coincide. But go ahead, Brian. What were you saying? Oh, I was just going to say, speaking of, you know, that, what's, what's uh, your day, day like at uh, Atlassian? Oh, yeah. It's uh, a bit of a mixed bag because um, so Atlassian, if anyone's not like super familiar, um, a lot of people in tech are probably familiar with like Jira and Bitbucket and Confluence and um, a lot of products that I end up forgetting because we've, we've got a lot and that's all <laughs> under the Atlassian umbrella. Um, yeah. So like if you're in tech, you're probably familiar with Atlassian in some way, just at least something we've touched. Um, Trello is the other thing. Um, I um, yeah, the are pipelines, uh, bamboo, um, lots of lots of stuff. So um, I'm under the jurisdiction of like these all the buyer experience of anything that has to do with Atlassian. So it's a very mixed bag what I do. Like sometimes I'm doing marketing campaigns that are um, that they have kind of a lot of creative fun with. So I implement um, like a quiz that's sort of a choose your own adventure type of thing. Um, it's or sometimes I'm like building stuff for our summit events. Um, we kind of touch a lot of different areas. Um, basically, our, our web presence touches a lot of different areas of the company. So it's I don't always have a usual day to day, but that's kind of what's cool about it. Um, it's like yeah, it's definitely. Um, and I like to make a name for myself. If if anyone's kind of confused about how they may implement something, I like a creative challenge, and I like to let other people know um, that like that's what I'm here for. If <laughs> you not necessarily how something's going to be built, like I'm the person who I'll beat my head against the wall until I figure it out. Like so, so, so as a senior web developer, what are you actually um, touching? Are you more the JS side? Are you more the CSS side? Or, I mean, are you front end, back end? How does that work? Um, front end, so like a lot, a lot of JS and CSS for the front end. What I'm maintaining like kind of not necessarily back end is that we have a lot of content that comes in through a CMS and we are kind of in the middle of we're going to be maybe migrating to a newer CMS, something like Contentful, something that's serverless. But there is some legacy code to maintain. Um, like so a lot of people I don't think I've ever even heard of FreeMarker, which is like uh, the templating language that I'm using. It's if you've done PHP, you'll you'll figure it out. It's basically the same thing. It's um, it's like templating but for Java. And um, that's kind uh, of as close to the back end as I get because I'm not a not a back end person. But um, that's that also kind of brings an interesting challenge of like maintaining legacy code because I've done that for years and there's kind of that can be kind of a fun challenge is like bring that into a like modern setting and like trying to make 
you know, maybe a older database work and bring it onto a kind of more modern front end. Um, I have fun with that. So <laughs> it's uh, mostly like what you'll see of what I do is all 100% like JavaScript, CSS, but uh, behind the scenes can be like an interesting sort of a journey to get there, so. So do they, do they use, a, you all use a custom CMS then and you're, and you're looking to move towards like a more of a, like you said contentful, like back yeah. end stuff? Yeah, Contentful is something we're looking like to move a lot of our stuff towards because um, Trello, I know they're they're looking for that. Um, we have we have like some of our content managers they use uh, WordPress. I generally have not touched the WordPress oh. part, but uh, we also have used Magnolia, which is a CSMS that is maybe is not super popular because it's Java based, um, yeah. but it's. Um, it is pretty cool. It's pretty robust. It's, if you've ever used Drupal, it's kind of similar. Um, oh, yeah. Frederick's yeah. never used Drupal ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, a Drupal fan. Cool. I live. Yeah. I live in Drupal a lot of days. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Like before this, I was. I spent so many years. Basically, that was kind of my uh, go-to. As a freelancer, I did a lot of like uh, freelance Drupal and WordPress maintenance. Um, so we're just getting called into like, hey, we inherited this Drupal site or this. WordPress site. I don't even ever seen it before, but it's broken. Can you find out why? <laughs> so, yeah. um, that was it's always... funny how, like, in a lot of jobs where you don't really think about, you know, you, you, you're thinking about the newest technologies and you're trying to stay ahead of the curve, and but you don't think that a lot of the times, or, or at least some of the times, you're going to be presented to these challenges with legacy stuff that you have to do, or you know, it's like, um, like you said, like some kind of old PHP stuff or um, an HTML email that's all tables that you have to figure out that you're like, oh, what happened here? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. And it's at every, you know, I think at any job I've ever been at, some even you know the newest stacks, they're still behind the scenes. If they often inherit a really large site, and they're they are doing their best to migrate it over, and maybe like ninety percent of it is like just gleaming new, cutting edge everything. And then there's a few pages that they will get to them eventually. Like you know, I promise we'll get to those, and they're still just. I <laughs> I shudder to think. I mean, some my at my last job, uh, I wasn't even assigned these tasks, but I just like I found some pages that this is this hurts my soul. I have to update this. I have to at least get rid of the tables. Like we don't need to do table layouts. I can I can fix this. Um, I would I would occasionally find things like those, and I just like they weren't super high priority pages, but I still I I felt the need to like this is under my jurisdiction. I can fix this. This is gonna going to keep me up at night if someone doesn't bring it into this century. Well, it's up to somebody to be proactive about that stuff. So, you know, yeah. good for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nobody else is going to look at that going, you know what? I want to fix that table layout. Yeah. It's probably, probably no one's actually visiting it either. There's probably got like no traffic going to that page, but it's still, I'll know it's there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Those, those tables are there and they must go away. Yeah. <laughs> So are you using, uh, I'm just curious, are you doing the more grid or or just general floats or flexbox? What do you, uh, how are you doing a lot of your layouts these days? Um, almost 100% flexbox these days. Um, haven't really gotten, like, Atlassian's pretty good about, um, they, they don't necessarily worry about, like, you know, if something doesn't work in IE6, they're, they're not going to cry. So um, I think we <laughs> probably do have the go ahead at least to, you know, um, try out grid, maybe not 100%, because we still, we still want to, like, um, yeah. offer support for, like, you know, people who are still on server, like, IE9. Um, it's definitely we don't want to, like, cut off everyone who may not be, like, on the 100% latest browser. But um, that is something I've been, like, looking at in my personal projects, and I love it. I think it's awesome. Um, and that's definitely the future. It would, I think, make everyone's lives easier. Um, I think maybe at some point everyone would... Stop complaining about CSS and how hard it is because it should make everyone's lives easier. Yeah. You know, uh, I, go ahead. Oh, I was actually going to introduce Segway for you. It's a perfect opportunity to ask your question, I think. It is, and actually, that's where I was going. So <laughs> speaking of that kind of stuff, I, was, I would love to jump into the, uh, the 18th century oil painting project. And sure. it's funny because I was at, I'll ask you more uh, details about it in a second, but I was, I was talking to to Brian earlier before the show about how everything's laid out. I believe everything's in absolute position. And we were saying, mm -hmm. wouldn't it be great if you 
had a project like this that you did it in at Flexbox or or um, or Grid and made it a responsive painting. And like, like I think Brian cited The Last Supper. Like if you had The Last Supper as a painting or whatever, right? And oh, you and sized it down and it was in. a responsive painting, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I was imagining that it would actually, it would just be Jesus and then you'd resize and more. Yeah, people. and all the other people would fill in. Yeah, they or fade it. <laughs> fade it. Yeah. Or the table could get smaller and they could just kind of like try to cram oh. around it maybe. <laughs> yeah, or exactly. something. Yeah. People oh, stand up awesome. out of their chairs. Oh yeah, yeah. People could just move maybe around the room, like you know, yeah. offer up their seats. That's that's an interesting idea. Mm -hmm. All right. So next project. This is coming out when? Uh, next week. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Stay tuned next Thursday. Boom! Yeah. Exclusive. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Oh, let, let's talk about this project. The 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 18th century oil painting. What is this about? What is it? Um. It is. Uh. Well, it was inspired by American Dead. <laughs> um, it's just a, uh, there's probably like, um, I know there was that video that like, uh, that Vice did that to kind of show that screen cap, but um, it is, it's inspired by 18th century art, but it was just like the inspiration of it was uh, actually from a cartoon. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, I can probably try to find the actual image that is inspired by it. Um, was, was, was there an uh, actual like a uh, still of Fran with with that look? Yeah, there is. It's, oh, okay. Let me try to find it. It's, um, sorry, this is super riveting video right here. Oh no, no, no. Do a Google Good. search. And, and Fran is one of the characters from uh, American Dad for uh, people that don't know the the show, which it's a great show. So you should uh, you should actually try to go back and watch some of those. I don't even. What, yeah, what I don't. Show? I don't think they have them anymore. American Dad. Oh yeah, I, I think it's not going anymore. I, th I feel like it's still. It is still going. Is it? Okay. I th think it is. I you know I'm not. Uh, yeah, could be wrong. Date on it. Um, I last I checked, there was some insane amount of seasons, and I'm not even like up to date on all of them. Oh um, yeah, maybe it's like on season 18. Who knows? But yeah, that was that yeah. was a great show, or is a great show. No, the the, Sim the Sim Simpsons is just like here. Hold my beer. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> the Simpsons will outlive all of us. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's still going. Yeah, it's still going. Oh okay, nice. But yeah, and so anyway, there's a. There, oh, yeah. you you got the picture? Yeah, I put it in chat because I uh, realized it's been a while since I've used Google Chat, and I forgot if there's a share screen feature. <laughs> oh, yeah, so, if you want to share your yeah. screen, go up to the uh, left, and it's like the second icon down, share screen. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. We could show the uh, the audience at home. Yeah. It's just the inspiration, so um, I don't know if you guys oh, can see my sweet. screen yet, but so, uh, yeah, this... Um, yeah, still oh. shot uh, from the cartoon. It ended up being, uh, that ended up turning into the CSS thing, which I'm just loading it now, and my internet's a bit slow right now, so excuse me. But oh, yeah. yeah, that's what ended up being the uh, CSS this. So you can kind of see the resemblance. It's a similar, like, outfit and stuff. I just, um, I often have, as probably a lot of people do, um, TV kind of on in the background, maybe not 100% paying attention to it. Um, but I, I paused this at this point and I was like, I just kind of knew I wanted to do something with this image. I wasn't sure exactly what yet, but I saved that for later. And um, it was sort of a long road, like going from that to this, but uh, that was the kind of the, uh, the visual inspiration of it. So that's so interesting. So you just by serendipity, you got to that point of the show where you pause it and you were like, Oh, you know what? I'm going to do something with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool. And you, you I think you kind of, I, I think you put in the show notes or in the doc rather, you said it was uh, it's your husband's fault. How, how, what, uh, what is that? Yeah. So one second, I'm trying to stop sharing my screen because I don't want to oh, take sure. up your guys's, uh, Oh God, how do I stop sharing my own screen? Bad. I think it's up at the it's in the same spot. Okay, yeah, I keep uh, looking, and it's not. Oh. Again, this is all just very riveting <laughs> shows. As I'm <laughs> giving you the the best content I possibly I, can. I mean, for our, for our audio listeners, she's actually juggling with one hand while she's doing this. This is oh, pretty that amazing. Much better, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you're doing it, honestly. Yeah, I'm. I. I. All right. Um, 
and they're all knives. Oh, yeah. so, Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the my husband's fault part of that is um, if you can sort of imagine, like I'm before I was ever a developer, I was I don't know, I consider myself an artist. I wasn't like a trained one. I just that was something I kind of assumed I'd always end up doing. Um, I always, you know, did drawing and painting and whatnot. And I kind of stopped doing that once I started working in, you know, as a developer. Um, it just, you know, you lose, I don't know, the time for some uh, yeah. personal projects. But after a few years, then you start to realize that those are important and you do need to actually set aside some time for stress, like relief or whatever. So um, it was after like several years of like working as a dev that I started getting to that. Um, and I had done some like not very impressive CSS art before because like I just um, I do really enjoy what I do like I enjoy like the building like in development and um, I kind of got into like the early bits of CSS art that were again not impressive just like oh you can make a thing with CSS cool um, just because of the struggle of actually like implementing a design like as a web page is no matter what you're working on, if you're working in multiple development environments, like dev, test, production, whatever, having your images synced through all those is just always a pain. Like no matter what, even if you have a very sophisticated build, minification, what have you, just having them the same in every environment, it's just it's not as easy as deploying code and having it go, you know, off and whatever somewhere. Um, it's just and. Uh, you know, back in the days when I first actually touched any like HTML or CSS, there wasn't CSS wasn't really that powerful. I mean, like back when I was a kid, you couldn't just add shadows. Um, and when designs were handed off, it was designers would hand you all their assets, like you know, including the button that had uh, it was an image with text and all of their. Here's like, my Photoshop fancy. file. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and you just slice it all up. And uh, um, I hate I hated those days. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Not and because images table. are, <laughs> yeah, and because images are like so, just I mean, there's just a pain to like you know make sure they're uploaded properly and in the same like production environment and dev environment. I just started like trying to figure out like, do I need an image? Can I just make this? Like CSS has gotten powerful, right? Like, can I just? And turns out, yeah, you can a, a lot. Um, so that it was just in work, it just kind of became a challenge to see as. Okay, how much of this can I implement like using no images? Obviously, I'm going to need like a photo, but I'm not going to upload an entire image just to do this like fancy style button because it turns out I can fancy style it however the designer wanted. Um, so um, that was kind of what inspired just the early little bits of art because I just thought, oh, it's so cool. Um, so when I started actually trying to get into real art in my spare time, it was just because I was like really. I'd been working a lot, and I realized I would sleep a lot better and just have be a little happier if I like uh, remembered that I used to have creative pursuits. So I uh, slowly started to get back into it, and it had been so long that I was just kind of like doing some really basic art, like very simple shapes. I would be embarrassed to show you. Um, and my husband noticed this, and like he. He's not embarrassed to like to point out if something is not super great. He just he was kind of noticing this thing I was doing, and uh, not in a mean way. He's just like, oh, uh, I don't know. I, I've seen you do some stuff before. That's like really impressive. That seems kind of easy for you. And I'm just, I hear that, and I'm like, How dare you? What? <laughs> like that's easy for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, Does he still have and, his teeth? Oh yeah. <laughs> Somehow, because um, you know, my immediate thought was, "Well, you are not an artist. How dare you?" Because um, he's not. He's you know, that's not, not a hobby of his. So how would he know? And also, this is an art style. And how you know? And last of all, how dare you? If I didn't say that enough, um, and he of course you know conceded like totally. That's forget I said anything. That's I'm I'm totally right. But. Um, <laughs> because I can't let these things go in my head, I'm just like oh, I will show that man. He he will rue the day he ever doubted <laughs> me, which is and I'm making that sound worse than it is. It's just that he's someone who has been like my biggest supporter throughout my life. He knows if I can do better, and he would tell me like, you know, I wouldn't say anything if I didn't think you could do it better. I know you can, and um, that's just kind of how he is always. And um, in this respect, he conceded like, hey, I'm totally wrong. Maybe. I, I'll say this, I'm not an artist. 
But I uh, considered a kind of challenge. I'm like, okay, no, I, I gotta make something that is going to make him eat his words. And um, I had kind of remembered the CSS and just how I enjoyed doing it. And I wanted to get back into doing something like that anyway. And so I was thinking, oh, that'll, that'll be cool. Like I can do like something. And then he would, I would say like, hey, this is an easy write because it really takes effort to type, don't you know? But um, their thing is that he's also, well, not only is he not an artist, he's not in tech. So I'd like have to explain to him like, you know, what would I have to like basically give him a lesson in CSS and then after he gets the lesson, then he can see that I made something and it's like- This is the box great, model. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, one of the things that I, I remember if you guys have spent any time on Reddit, sometimes people will post um, like how they built something or a, like a really long GIF of like plenty of pictures of steps or like yeah, how they, yeah. oh. um, lots of, I, I'm seeing a lot of lathe art, like people using a lathe to sand stuff that it takes a long time and it generates a lot of dust. And the end result is kind of, after so many steps and so much sanding and varnishing, yeah, and the end result is like, <laughs> oh, cool. Like, so I was kind of thinking, like, does it really matter if you know how difficult something was to make if it just isn't really that cool to look at? Like, does anyone care? So um, that was kind of, I'm still like thinking, like, how am I going to make something impressive that's going to make my husband eat his words? Um, I just really it was like, okay, well, no, it, I should make something that, like, Divorced of any context, he should just be able to look at and appreciate like any other person, like any other piece of art, and just like, oh, I enjoy this. This is a good piece of art. I approve because for some reason that was important to me to uh, to do. But um, that kind of became a weird goal of mine, like have this uh, accessible piece of art that doesn't require any sort of, you know, backstory. Um, the backstory would be cool. That would be def that's like a bonus, but I really just, does it have to have a backstory? Does it have to, it, it still should look nice is the ultimate goal. And it should ideally be interesting in origin. <laughs> that's uh, kind of a roundabout way of saying it, uh, it came with a personal challenge, uh, trying to prove something. Um, you know, when, yeah. I looked, when, I, when I looked at it, I was kind of disappointed that it didn't animate. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, dad. Dad. Yes, dad. like eyes blinking or something. I don't know. Like it's very <laughs> impressive that, when you, yeah. like you said, like when you look at it and you see, like, oh, that's oh, a really yeah. nice painting. And then, but for like on on our level, where we actually, when someone says, no, that that's actually code, and we're like, what? And then we, you know, <laughs> pull up the Chrome Inspector and we start looking through it, and we're like, oh, whoa, yeah. fuckles. Oh, look at that. Nine. <laughs> oh, no, oh, okay. Like that's really <laughs> impressive. Yeah, how long did it take? Uh, do you know, like your total time spent? Yeah, I didn't really keep track. Like it probably would have been fine. I feel like after a month or two, but I can't leave it alone. I didn't actually intend for it to be published. Like I hadn't shared it publicly on any social media. I kept it on my GitHub because I knew it was like a, it was finished enough that like a, an employer could look at it. Like if I was. Because, yeah. you know, anytime if I'm interviewing, I'll be like, I know CSS, so you don't have to ask me what the box model is. Like, that's my my real goal is to, like, have the kind of portfolio that, like, no matter what the platform, like, I could just have some sort of example. <laughs> like, do you know JS? And I just point to something. Like, yeah, here's yeah. a link. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, this is, yeah, this is a perfect one because, like, do you know CSS? You're like, boom. <laughs> yeah, I think I do. <laughs> I'll take my first paycheck next week. Thanks. <laughs> Well, it's because I'm really Corner like, I'm office. Great, thank you. Because I'm not great at interviewing. I mean, even if I know something really well, I could get flustered. Yeah. I think most, like most people, like I mean, I don't have all of the CSS lectures memorized. Actually, I mean, there's some stuff that I, you know, try to think like, oh, do I want to use just by like, you know, center or is it align self? Um, stuff that I, you know, every day. It's not 100% rote. I don't think any human has those things rote. But um, in an interview setting, yeah, it's. That that is my goal to just have a uh, a portfolio someday that is just like one hundred percent speaks for itself. Um, so in that in that sense, I just had it off my GitHub. Um, getting back to the point of I, did, I still didn't consider it finished, 
I probably tweaked on and off over the course of like a year um, when I probably should have just left it alone after like two months. Um, and I'm trying to get better about that. I I will like just endlessly tweak something until I end up ruining it and then I have to unruin it. And it's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but do you, have, do you have fun tweaking it though? Oh, I do. Yeah. Yeah. So who cares? <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you enjoy it. So when yeah. did you actually start getting attention from this? Because you, you you got some big attention from this. Um, sorry, my dog's just heard someone else. Oh no! <laughs> so, put uh, him up close to the microphone. I love that sound. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, it was like a barely a little whisper. Of sound. You get him, There's buddy. Get him. High get alert. Him. Um, That's a good boy. So oh. <laughs> so yeah, people noticed. Um, Actually, like someone who, um, yeah, this woman named Stacy, she had been, uh, she just like found my GitHub. Um, I don't know exactly how. I think she just uh, maybe found it, like you know, looking for CSS stuff, and she linked it on Twitter, um, unbeknownst to me. Like it was that was in May of last year. I woke up one morning and checked my email. I was like, what? Why? People? Why <laughs> What's am I getting spam? emails? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I assumed it was spam. I'm like, why would anyone be emailing me? It's like, don't they know what day? It, it's early. But um, yeah, I hadn't realized this was posted on Twitter and like some bunch of people were retweeting it and that was pretty weird. <laughs> I didn't stop, I mean, before then I hadn't really paid much attention to almost any social media and I mean, or especially Twitter at all, but then I was kind of glued to that for like a, a couple hours. I'm like, they just notifications, where are they, where are they coming from? This is weird. Um, Cause at that point also like, Again, like I mentioned before, like I, I knew it was at least worth having on GitHub for showing that I know CSS. Like for the for when the time came that I would have to like go on an interview, um, I didn't really think anyone else would be like into this kind of thing. Um, so that was definitely a surprise that other people were interested in it. Um, I wasn't expecting that. I was definitely not expecting that kind of reaction. Um, also, just not expecting that people are like super nice and not sending me a bunch of weird trolling like angry stuff that was unexpected like and i think that speaks to this community it seems to be made up of largely pretty good people <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm surprised. Think we have a decent uh, community yeah yeah and i'm surprising that people being like absolute positioning yeah <laughs> <laughs> why isn't this in flex box <laughs> yeah 100 why isn't it in grid why isn't yeah yeah why isn't it responsive <laughs> I mean, I did include the caveat that, like, it's, you know, I've, I've done a cross-browser, like, that's something I worry about every day, so, like, this, I don't care, don't get, don't, don't make a pull request, like, don't don't uh, assign me an oh. issue about IE6, which people do, of course. For I, sure, I was about to say, have you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what's really cool about, well, one of the really cool things about this project is, and I, I believe you cited this as well, Diana, is that how it looks so different in all these different browsers. And uh, the way it renders out, it's it's really interesting. Yeah, and like I knew it would break in other browsers, just that like when I was heads down working on it, I really didn't care. I'm just like I'm I'm, I'm only focused on Chrome right now. I just I, I know it's gonna be garbage, but you know whatever. Um, yeah, I didn't think it would be like interesting garbage. I didn't think it'd be like kind of its own artful form of garbage in itself and it's like it's own. <laughs> well, well, yeah. well it's funny because it yeah. takes on the form of different kind of um styles of art and it's yeah. it's it, it's the same painting if you will but you know in in one realm it's very baroque and another it's very jackson pollock like it's it's it but it's the same code yeah it's uh there's there's definitely uh I don't know. It could make for some interesting miscommunication. Like if if two people are seeing the same thing through two different browsers, and like one is said like, "Oh, did you see this? Like, don't you notice this element?" And then someone who's browsing on like a really old browser might think like, "What are you high? Like, I'm not seeing that at all." It's um, kind of like art, though. I mean, <laughs> like if you get ten people that look at a painting, they'll see it and they'll perceive it in ten different ways. But this way is even more unique because it's it's like like looking through it through different different glasses or lenses or however you want to call it. It's, it's very interesting. I like it. Yeah, it's true. I mean, like certain art styles are, you know, much more appreciated by some. And I mean, 
it, some require, I guess, uh, acquired taste, I guess. <laughs> so. it, it, it would be awesome to get uh, like a long frame and then get a screenshot in each of the browsers and then like have it printed in sequence, with, like a you know a little caption that says the br the browser. I mean, right behind you. You could probably, wall. You could probably do that. Do that with like a, a browser stack. Oh get, yeah, get probably really could. Little. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that'd be worth it. Just get the account for a month, just so you could take all those uh, screenshots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. But what you know, it, uh, I just want to ask you. You said that you came from a art background. Were you an acrylic uh, oil painter, um, like the linseed oils? Oh, yeah, acrylic, I, okay. I tried. I'm just like not patient enough for oils. Um, yeah, I done yeah. like acrylic Oof. and uh, and so much sculpture and um, like pencil and digital art too. Um, back when yeah, we, yeah. Like, well, wasn't it the best to have that like? two containers of pencils where you had all your H's and all your B's and you're like, you know, you knew exactly what to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With a, with a special, I can't even remember what kind of eraser, you, but you needed a, a Oh a yeah. It was, it's a, a, one of those squishy yeah. erasers. Yeah. 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 Like a putty eraser. Mm -hmm. I forget the term oh. for it, but. I hate it oil too. Like, what do you mean? It's still not dry. I love, <laughs> I love oil. Oh. Paints. I can't do acrylic oil. That's my jam. I love it. Uh, I would see, I would like to be good at that. And I mean, that's why like um, I'm pretending that the, my digital version is like, it's, it's reminiscent. It's inspired by oil. And I wish yeah. I had that kind of patience because I do so, so love you, the effect. You, you can't work on like one oil painting at a time. You have to work on 10 at a time. You let the underpainting dry on one and then you jump to the next project. That's how you do oils. Really? I didn't mm -hmm. know that. Okay. Yeah. That might help. Okay. Yeah. Just get, get a bunch going and you, you, you just cycle through them. Oh God! You what, did you start, what did you start here, Frederick? <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what I wanted to ask you too is once you Whoa. had this project with the uh, with the with the code all done and you had this painting and you went back to your husband, where you're like, "Here's your words, stuff in your mouth, please <laughs> eat that." No. no, he actually just walked by like my screen one day while I was. I mean, it was almost in a done state, and he's like, "That is cool. Whatever you're working on, I'm like I really like that." And I hadn't even told him what it was. I hadn't even told him that it was made with CSS. Um, that was good enough for me. I'm just, you know, that he unprompted and like smug satisfaction. Oh yes. <laughs> It'd be great if that. it was animated. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I, am, I am kidding. <laughs> now that you say it with the eyes or something, I maybe somebody can afford that. I no, am working you? on a separate animated thing. Not, not that one. I mean, like I'm, um, since then, I've I've only put out like one new piece of CSS art, and that's like not a rapid enough clip for the internet. I don't think um, I should just. Oh, um, you know, you, you know what? I'm sorry to uh, interject, but you know what? This would be really good as is a code pen challenge with somebody taking that and bringing it on code pen and forking it off and making some cool animated things that you could do with it. I'm talking to you, Cobra Winfrey. You know who I, who, you know who you He's, are. Oh, Adam. he has done some. Yeah. Oh, I mean, he, he took that. But but yeah, but I feel like yeah. if that like your your work there, like specifically that was a code pen challenge. Oh, that'd be so awesome. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, I'm gonna shoot it that tweet. Be, yeah. Man. I didn't really make it super, like as you mentioned, absolute positioning. I, I don't think I made everyone's lives uh, easier for animating that. So that might be a bit of a, well, a challenge. That's a challenge. <laughs> yeah, that's all part of it. <laughs> yeah. You know, speaking about challenges and personal projects, you, I, you, you put this tweet out, and I think it was fairly recently. Uh, and I, I just wanted to read it and talk to you about it because I think this is a great subject about, again, personal projects. My favorite thing in the world is when I'm entirely consumed by personal projects that I'm constantly waking up in the middle of the night with a new with new ideas and inspiration. The lack of sleep and uh, waning regard for my health may be taking a physical toll, but I cannot stop. Like I I, I love that because and I I, th I believe we could all relate to that. Yeah, and um, it's funny because. Even though like I've done art my whole life and I've had like you know been very heavily invested in uh, like art projects um, on my life, that kind of like intense like I don't know all consuming consumption with it I I could word this better but um I don't know how else to word it but like the 
the way you get consumed by a project, it's not really something I had experienced until getting into development. Because I was actually referencing um, a JavaScript project when I was talking about that one. And that one's still not finished. I'm still working on it. And I was one that I used basically the entirety of my uh, Christmas break to work on. Um, not really <laughs> sleeping or showering much. And uh, but it's such a blast. Like when you actually get a, an idea just like lodged in your brain that has to come out. And uh, I, it's one that yeah, I I really want to have like a long block of time to finish it up because it I, I had such a blast with it. And it's almost one almost done, and I want to get back to it. Um, but it's uh, yeah, an art project really never kind of grasped me the same way. Um, the way like a code challenge does because there's trying to like bring what you're imagining like in your you know in your brain you have an idea of what this is going to be or how it's going to behave and having to like translate your thoughts into like mm, sort of yeah. another language and actually get this to behave in a certain way like in a certain browser is that's a whole other challenge and it's it is frustrating and the sleep oh the lack of sleep it like invades thoughts i literally yeah. will just not have any dreams for those times like i just i go to sleep like for when i do sleep and it's just i'm thinking of like what i was writing earlier that day and sometimes like if i'm lucky enough i will happen to dream up like an interesting solution and that's also super cool um that's like that feels like having superpowers because you weren't actually at your keyboard but then you can get an idea that's like <laughs> that's the coolest thing in the world to me um and i'm always amazed when that happens and it actually works um, cause when I was first learning to code, I would just like dream nonsense. I'm like, I wonder if that is a thing. Nope, no, not at all. <laughs> um, but once you start to know enough, then you can actually sort of get inspired in your dreams and have it actually work out. And that's amazing. Um, yeah, yeah. I've, I've, <laughs> I've experienced that too. There's, there's a few times I've had, I, I go to sleep. I'm still thinking about work or something I'm working on in general. And I'll like, one night it was Python. I was doing something in Python and, and in my sleep, I thought of like how to, how to do it. I woke up the next morning and I was like, ah, oh, gotta, gotta type this in before I forget, forget how to do it. <laughs> I think it's a common thing. Cause yeah, yeah I've had that yeah, too, where I woke yeah. up in the middle of the night and I grab my phone and I get into things and I'm like, Oh, must write this down in things. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Okay. Send an alarm. Remind me at 9 AM. <laughs> But it's weird because you like you. It's you feel like you didn't sleep, like you were actually working. You feel like you were all working night. all night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That I'm. I'm always confused because when I wake up in the morning, I'm like, I did sleep right because I don't think I'd actually be like this functional. Like I don't think I'd, you know, because I'm awake right now and I feel okay, right? So I don't feel like in, in my brain there's... I don't remember the sleep, but it had to have happened, right? I wonder if there's a term for this, like working, dreaming phenomena. Like there must be something for it. I'm sure it's out there. there I'm there's sure something there for everything. Yeah. Yeah. It maybe uh, is um, like a certain... Work sleep <laughs> Yeah. Maybe you just don't don't enter, what, the REM phase? Maybe it's just like never, never maybe quite enter all REM pools. phase. I mean, it might maybe. be part of uh, like an aspect of lucid dreaming. I don't know. Maybe... That's fair. Well, yeah. We'll, we'll have to look at it. Uh, we'll have to look it up and see if we can find something and, and share it. It's it's, it's an interesting question. If there is something that's like that, does do you know if Atlassian actually allows you to uh, include those as your hours in your uh, day in your, <laughs> for your day? <laughs> oh well. I mean, um, if I were hourly, right. that'd be interesting. I was working <laughs> between <laughs> three a.m. and four a.m. So technically, <laughs> I, was I think if I were on. Yeah, I think if I were on call, I would like get to include that like as a stipend or whatever. But I don't know. That's, <laughs> that's you know what flexible. I thought. Would, you know what I thought would be interesting is if since we're talking about the personal projects, is if we could provide people some tips on personal projects, like uh, where, like for example, where to find the time. And I'm, I'm sure you have Diana have a lot of experience with this, and maybe you could provide some valuable takeaways on that. Yeah, I always kind of feel uh, fraudulent, like giving advice because it's like you know, really the biggest. Uh, well, well, I mean, I for have you, what luxury would you do? of. I mean, I have the luxury of like I don't have uh, outside of work. I don't have a ton of other commitments, and that's like that is a luxury in and of itself. And some other people, if they have you know kids or whatever, and I know it can be like really hard to carve out time for yourself. I mean, it's hard enough like just with, you know, just dogs or whatever. It's. Um, 
yeah, it really, it took me so many years to actually like realize that it was important to do. Um, there, I don't know, it, I would liken it to a weird American phenomenon where you just kind of like are chasing some sort of glory, like the Elon Musk-esque glory of like, it's, it's really noble to just be constantly working and like, you know, whoever works the most is like, show, shows themselves to be the most worthy. And uh, it's kind of easy to fall in that, like I think probably when you first get into tech, um, it's just, I, I don't think it's, there's anyone necessarily forcing you to do that. It's just, it's kind of, um, it's a very natural rhythm to fall into. And um, yeah, after several years of that, and then, then like finally realizing that like, there's really no, not only there's there no shame in like taking some time for leisure, even if just like, if you're into like playing video games and that like helps you relax and helps you like unwind your brain a bit, like 100% do that. Um, like I don't, you know, all my free time is not spent creating art or doing like amazingly productive things. Sometimes I do need to just like let my my brain like kind of unwind a bit. And sometimes it is, you know, in, enjoying media that's not always 100% highbrow. Um, that's not only like not shameful, it is 100% necessary. I encourage all of that. And sometimes you need to do a lot of that before you can get into like, uh, you know, <laughs> sometimes you need to do several weekends of just like completely vegetative, like doing nothing before you can realize like, mm, you know, okay, maybe, maybe this weekend is not like, you know, maybe I won't watch uh, unsophisticated media. Maybe I'll like do something artistic. <laughs> um, yeah, sometimes you and, gotta find some time for yourself to recharge. Yeah, and so it it might take some time just to kind of like get into that groove, but um, I highly encourage and recommend um, just taking that like time for yourself to, it. yeah, it, it'll take time to find whatever it is that will kind of um, help you get at ease, but um, it is 100% worth it and necessary for mental health, what have you, so. So what about finding, um, so, so we talked about finding the time and you know, you, you also need to find a balance. Um, mm -hmm. Where, how, how does how does personal projects help you build skills? Like, um, you know, it, it, it's not just about what you do at work every day, but personal projects could help you um, diversify your skills by doing things that you are not maybe responsible for day to day, right? Yeah, 100%. Um, like my, uh, my non CSS projects that I've been trying to do more of, like I'm like I want to, like I mentioned that I want to have a portfolio that I can point to. Like if somebody asks if, you know, like how's your JavaScript, I'm just point to something. Um, <laughs> So, um, and I've just been doing like really small projects. I don't have anything like that yet. Um, but I try to think of just something that I like doing in my spare time, like non-tech related at all. And for me, that's like, it was uh, it was kind of a stretch to when I was trying to think like of anything that is not related to art. I'm like, Cause that's been my, you know, go-to for so many years. Um, and almost everyone I know is uh, into gaming, and especially like you know a lot of people in tech. It's very popular, and that is the one thing I'm just 100% not into. Um, ah. But I remembered, oh wait, I'm kind of a gamer. I really love solitaire, and uh, so then I remembered, oh wait, maybe I could actually build solitaire. And uh, I yeah, a couple, I don't know, a few months ago or something, I was like, oh yeah, that's something I could do JavaScript wise. That would just be fun. It like. It's, I mean, I put that on my GitHub. It's like, it's, it's a small little like project, but it I actually ended up like learning just on that project, like stuff that I haven't really had to use in my day to day. Like, you know, when I do like UI, um, but just that did actually help me like help kind of stretch my abilities a bit. Cause it was, it was 100% a selfish devoted to my own interests things, but using the like tools of my trade and it, um, I would say that actually did help me. Like it, it's it ended up being helpful for, I don't know, uh, <laughs> in a professional sense, I guess it it was a you know um, it was an entirely personal motivated by my own personal um, leisure needs, <laughs> if you will. But that that doesn't mean it can't be uh, you know also be productive. There's you can you can learn something every day um, in the unlikeliest of places. It wasn't something I anticipated would would uh, serve that purpose. I was just kind of 
trying to, um, well, in my downtime, keep my JavaScript skills a little bit sharp. Because at that point, I had been like, uh, I think I think that was born of, I was just doing a lot of like templating that week, and I hadn't touched enough JavaScript, mm -hmm. and I was just like missing it. And uh, I, I always have these terrible fears in the back of my head that if I if I'm away from something for more than three days, I'll like completely forget how to do it. So. Um, it, which obviously doesn't happen, but um, that helps put my mind at ease. It, I have fun with that, and um, also, you know, you can put those things on your GitHub. <laughs> it's, yeah, exactly. You, yeah, I don't think like there's. Uh, that's that's something I've struggled a lot with too. Like I I put them on my GitHub back when I only I didn't have any followers, and I was like, well, nobody's gonna see this. So even if it's like really you know small and embarrassing, and like you know who cares? Um, because nobody's gonna see it. But it it does help someone because like there's always somebody who like you there's always gonna be somebody who knows less than you. There's always gonna be somebody who knows knows more than you. Um, you can always learn something. You can always teach something. So there's like always value to be had. Like whatever sort of like personal um, tech project you have, and just like putting them out there and sharing them. Um, and that's something that I'm still like trying to reconcile with myself because it's something that, like I. Uh, I, I need to remind myself is not um, there's no like no shame in just like putting up a small project that's not like super 100% like amazing inspiring sometimes you just put up sometimes you just have to put a project that's just kind of fun or just kind of interesting um, there's always value to be had in that absolutely I think it's important to be vulnerable and to be humble and to show that side of yourself, you know, we, we all are human except for Brian. And it's also important to be able to show your work, you know, like this is where I came from and this is what I did and this is how I got there. And you could see that journey of, of, of where you've, where you've been and how you progressed. I mean, for example, we even still have our very first episode up on our website, uh, on our, on a podcast, you can listen to it. And I have a little preface on there at the beginning of it, but it's like, it's, it. It's, it's un, unlistenable, but I still think it's important to have it on there because you don't want to hide that stuff, one, because you just come off disingenuous, but two, it's important to show your work. Like, this is where I was, you know, X amount of time ago, and between then and all these intervals now, this is where I'm at. Like, and I think for all of us as, again, human beings except Ryan, you could really appreciate <laughs> how someone grows and, and how they um, comprehend concepts, how they comprehend life, and, and where they are at as, as far as their career development. That is a good point. And now you're, you're reminding me that I've like, I've, I've stumbled upon like old code I've written from like years ago that I would, it uh, would embarrass me to put up, but maybe I should put it up somewhere. <laughs> and. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I'm sure, like everyone, that's something that uh, everyone's experienced. Like you know, something they wrote from many years ago and they revisit later. Like it's um, because it's, it's easier to also forget like your own progress sometimes if you feel like you're stuck in a rut. Like if you don't actually remind yourself, like oh wait, like there was a time not long ago when I knew nothing and uh, was really like struggling. And look how far I've come now, and that's, things aren't so bad. It's e easier to forget that stuff, right? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and just and to go back to what uh, a point that you made too, where people might be coming from the, t the context of not knowing some of those things uh, at the start as well in current day, they'll yeah. appreciate, oh, wow, she came from this. I could be like Diana and I could one day, you know, get to that point because I kind of understand this that she considers a, a beginner project. So, you know, I could also get to that point of from A to B within X amount of years and I can improve my skills. So yeah. you help inspire others. I would, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, oh, she, consider, she considers Francine a beginner's project, by the way, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I definitely didn't get distracted playing solitaire. You know. <laughs> yeah. Definitely was not playing solitaire during that conversation. I could, I could never play that game. I never win. Oh, uh, I, I love solitaire, and this is a nice implementation. My only, my feedback would be: a, Is there a way to zoom in that I'm maybe not? You know, I mean, you can use browser zoom in, but is there like yeah. 
Oh, Sorry, well, I, didn't, I yeah. didn't think of that. Oh, accessibility. I should be thinking about that. <laughs> Don't worry about it again. We're going to get with Marie and we're and Adam and we're going to Sir Coyer and we're going to push this out and it's going to be a co-pen challenge. I guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> you're going you're to hear it on co-pen radio pretty soon. It's going to be like, hey, this new design challenge. Okay. All right. I'll be ready for it. Yeah. <laughs> Brian, I believe you have a question. We're getting to the end. Yeah, well, I time has flown by, unfortunately. Um, I, I like to uh, ask a personal question. This one is should be Green. relatively. Um, that would be weird if, uh, well, the question is, <laughs> uh, again, again, as I was saying, is uh, it's a it's kind of a way of getting to know you outside of just you know coding and working um, and just your your outward public persona as far as that's concerned and you as a person. Uh, very simple question this week: What's a chore that you absolutely hate doing? And I'll go first. Uh, Frederick already answered green. Um, <laughs> mine it, mine is washing the dishes, which is hilarious uh frederick probably knows my my girlfriend uh she is a baker so i end up washing a lot of dishes to to help her out but i hate doing it it's the chore i hate it was my first job uh when i was 14 years old was washing dishes in a restaurant and i've hated it ever since i still hate doing it but that's my chore um and now uh you can go diana because frederick answered green green <laughs> 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 no what's your go ahead frederick what's your what's your chore oh uh, I'll, I'll try not to cry as i answer it's probably the dishes too because as a kid i had to uh, do a lot of those kind of uh, things by myself and clean the house because i didn't have any real family so i had to do a lot of that stuff anyway i'm gonna try to pass it be by before i start crying diana <laughs> oh jeez. <Okay>. Oh, <laughs> sorry you brought out a weird question and made me answer weird diana green <laughs> oh man <laughs> I'm so, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, well, I mean, as I sit here, I, I don't really want to pan out the camera because I have like several piles of uh, freshly laundered clothes here, and uh, let's see them. I have to force myself to actually fold them because it just seems so pointless. I hate doing it. Um, <laughs> I'm just I'm gonna wear them. Like, why do I bother folding them? Um, but that's adulthood, just doing shit that you don't want to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Every day. Have I've you tried my shit in a in, in in into the drawer? That's it. I don't fold anything. Have you tried <laughs> the uh, the rolling method versus it's folding? I hate when it comes to laundry. I don't mind folding laundry, but I hate. I feel like rolling is better. Like I haven't tried the rolling, but that yeah. kind of sounds like it would make more. Well, yeah. But how do I arrange it then? Like on top of it. Like yeah, you just put rolls on top of rolls. Yeah, you just stack up all the rolls. And um, we're not talking a ball here. We're just... <laughs> yeah, we're talking, think, think lasagna. <laughs> and lasagna, lasagna. Yeah, so just think like <laughs> you have a casserole dish is the drawer, and you're folding, and you're making lasagna. Okay. Don't eat it. I don't, I'm, not seeing, not thinking... I'm not seeing lasagna, but I kind of want to eat lasagna. Oh, now. wait, like a roulade, maybe? Like something circular. Circular, like yeah. A, yeah. Yeah, like a cylinder. Yeah, not, not, not lasagna noodles. Sorry. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Yeah. And now I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I want some lasagna. Some I could sauce. easily eat an entire pan of those. That's like Diana, speaking of the lasagna and meat sauce, we're at the <laughs> oh, end of the episode. <laughs> and uh <laughs> I was on a segue. Don't ruin my like, smooth segue. This is a perfect horrible. segue. <laughs> How dare you, sir? Diana. <laughs> If you could help us by providing any kind of a words of wisdom, anything that you want to tell the audience here at, at, at the end, anything uh, that you might have some advice. Eat lasagna. <laughs> Talk about a lasagna <laughs> recipe. Oh, I have none. No, I'm, I've like, I can't be trusted to keep lasagna in the house because I will literally eat like the entire, it's, it's bad. Um, <laughs> oh, words of wisdom. I, uh, I, if I can say any sort of like opposite words of wisdom in that uh, I I am going to be 34 on Sunday and I've been in this Happy field. Happy birthday. Working, thank you. <laughs> um, I've been working you're in this field. You're very young, for, by the way, just so you know. What's that? I said you're very young, by the way, just so you know. So don't think oh. 34 is old. Yeah. 
Well, is because I'm in tech and that's like kind of bordering on old, but um, no, yeah, it's not. that's a California <laughs> idea. You're very young. Well, um, no, I mean, I have like, you know, um, younger like coworkers and stuff. And I have, I've been like in this business in various methods, like, you know, contractor or whatever, what have you for I don't know, about six years right now. And I was just like reminding some of them someday, like, people who are like still trying to learn stuff and like feeling a little frustrated. And I, I, I feel the need to like remind that like I've had, I've learned things on the job as early as I actually don't want to say quite <laughs> like how long ago things that I've been employed and like making money, like as a professional, like techie kind of person. And I have like learned things that I'm like kind of embarrassed. I didn't know earlier. Um, so I would hope people take these kinds of things and realize that there's really like, no matter where you are, you're starting or if you're like overwhelmed, I, I am also someone who easily gets overwhelmed and you can be like good at anything with enough time. And, but you also don't have to be 100% good at everything. You like, it is always a ongoing learning process. And that is the cool thing about it. Um, it's, it should be, frightening that you'll never stop learning it should it should be exciting that you get to like try to be in an industry that is promises to always be exciting um will always be inspiring um that's yeah that's more just something i've been that's been on my mind because i have you know some younger coworkers who are trying to move up a bit in um like getting more into front end and uh i would offer those words of encouragement um to anyone who feels easily overwhelmed um that it's you shouldn't it's uh <laughs> it's it's actually like i don't know what else to say it's uh it's it's, it's, it's 100 percent okay job. not it's to know everything and it's yeah. actually encouraged not to know everything um because i can yep. you can gain insights by not knowing everything. you can like you can approach problems differently if you don't know 100 exactly. how yeah. to do everything um you yeah, can help well, with more creative solutions that other people who know everything might not have thought of. So well, yeah. one, of, one of our buddies, Jason Ogle from uh, user defenders, I, one of his famous saying is, is uh, you got to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. And mm -hmm. I, I think that that kind of echoes with what you said. It's that, you know, you're never going to know anything or everything, excuse me. You're never going to know everything. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, meant, I meant to say that to Brian, but you're never yeah. going to know, you're never going to know everything. And um, you have to be comfortable with, with that. You know, and you have to, as you said, Diana, you have to be excited about that because that's not a handicap. That's an opportunity because there's so much to know and there's so many different things to learn. And it's it's an exciting industry that we're in with a ton of opportunities to to learn, to move forward and to um, enhance your career as we go. Yeah, I, I want to say one one last thing too. Uh, nope. Before we end the show, end the show about uh, the age age thing is it's common. It seems to be very common in the industry that people feel like they're being aged out. And I would actually argue that the way the world is changing, people are living you know living longer lives, and there's a, a broad demographic of people that are much older. Um, an older generation can have a very different perspective, especially with design and dev, where they can be able to provide insight for that generation in the industry, things like accessibility and things like that. Um, that's very important. I don't think we should ever feel we're being aged out. And even if you're you know, starting this and you're like maybe like 50 or 60 years old, and you're actually trying to get in the career, you can. Well, just, just like uh, we, we spoke yeah. with Evan Yu on Tuesday where he was talking about how Google yeah. would hire people specifically for, uh, you know, with that uh, that are in different age groups just because to get their insight for that age group and to yeah. bring that user experience into the environment, into the product that they're building. It's very important. But again, yeah. we're we're going to another subject and it's already yeah. past our our bedtime here. So Diana, <laughs> if you will, Diana, what, what's the best way that people could get uh, to get, could get to know you? How, how, how do they learn about you? How do they learn? <laughs> that's, uh, oh, that's something. Oh, sorry, 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 Diana. What, what is your Twitter handle and what is your website? <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, like, I was like, like, Oh no, do I, do I write something? I have a um, book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
So yeah, my Twitter local. handle is uh, Cyan Harlow, which is a made up handle that was like assigned to me from a random password generator 15 years ago, which is uh, C-Y-A-N-H-A-R-L-O-W. Um, I don't know what it means either. It's, that's Love okay. It. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that's my online handle everywhere on Instagram, Twitter, um, basically anywhere where there was their social media is Cyan Harlow. Um, yeah. And I, I actually, as far as like getting to know me better, I, now that I, I have a, uh, a Twitter brand, I guess I'm, I'm supposed to like, I, I try to remember like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm supposed to tweet things occasionally and I'm really bad about doing that. <laughs> I'm a really good retweeter, but, uh, you got to get I, in a buffer and just start getting stuff pushed in there. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm a constant like type and then delete and then, ah, oh, that's garbage. I don't want to hear that. So. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure people <laughs> want to hear what you have to say. And what's your website address for, for everyone? I should get a more uh, easily accessible <laughs> address. I should get a .dev domain. Yeah, my uh, website is Diana, D-I-A-N-A -A hyphen Adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N-N-E. Um, God, I didn't even spell that right. Um, <laughs> spelling this out loud is you like, did, I never did. have to do it out loud. So it's... <laughs> you did. Um, and last but, question, uh, your favorite but, anime? You know, I've never actually, I hope I'm not, I hope this isn't terrible. Thank you, Matt, I've never seen a single anime. Oh, um, it's all right. It was yeah. just a random. No, it's, I, there's so many things that I feel like will get me kicked out of tech. Like, I, I'm not a gamer. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't, uh, that LaCroix, like, busy water that everyone loves, I, I'm not a fan. Um, my, my wife loves those. Yeah, I, I don't get it. They're they're so popular, and like it, there was a, almost a mutiny when they were gonna like replace them in the office with a different flavored beverage, and just uh, it, oh yeah, people will get off their knives. What? <laughs> yeah, That's I awesome. um, but that's one of them, and I and I know there's there's several animes that have been recommended to me, and it's just not something I've. Uh, Darling it, in the it, Franks, watch it. Okay, in all fairness, I'm behind on about. 100 movies just in general it's not specific to any subgenre um so yeah i i hope i haven't offended anyone <laughs> with that <laughs> no and there's Stellan. matt damon is an alien ruined the movie oh. damon? <laughs> what? What are you talking about? <laughs> just make on that on that note it was great talking with you <laughs> it was thanks great thanks everybody for watching yeah thank you so much diana really appreciate you being on the show thanks honestly. so much for having me on this was really fun and i yeah. hope i muted my uh sound right as my cats were loudly vomiting that was uh probably would have brought some real it wouldn't realness. be the first time of cats vomiting yeah. on the show honestly so i know i know i like to you know bring it real to you guys and let you know like my struggles my insecurities but that's probably too much to put on life your audience. textures life, life textures. textures hashtag yep. cat vomiting Thanks, everybody, <laughs> yeah. for watching. XOXO Gossip Girl.